Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two crazy, crazy Ketas. Ketas. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 300 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single single week so make sure you subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it yeah so welcome back to our couch we're actually on our couch yeah keto on the couch is back to on the couch and tabitha is like wait what are you doing on my couch i know that's my couch i was trying to set up the cameras and she was like uh what are you doing i'm like get out of the way she's like um this is my space this is my dog bed <laughs> So if you're new to our channel, for the last four weeks, we have been doing keto on the bench because we didn't want to move the camera because we had it all set up with our Christmas background and everything else. We lazy. But we're back to keto on the couch and uh, welcome to, wow, 300 new subscribers in the last week. Seven. 7,000 subscribers. 7,000 subscribers. This is all you guys. You have made this happen. Thank you. It is awesome. I gotta make my zip fist. Grape. What? Are you are you making terrible choices in the new year? Grape is like the best flavor. Oh my, on opposite day. No, it, grape is awesome. No. If you're new to our channel, Rachel hates anything grape. Cause I Dimatap. I love grape. I had too much Dimatap as a child. <laughs> So we are in the middle of a 30, 31 day, really. It's, we say 30 day, but it's 31 day. The entire month of January, we are only eating keto chow and keto bricks. Yeppers. And uh, yeah, so I'm just making sure I get all of my electrolytes in. Even though you do get all of your electrolytes when you drink three yeah. keto chows, most of the time I have only been drinking two keto chows hey. because I've been doing keto brick as well. Whereas I'm pretty much just doing keto chow. Yeah, and if you don't know what keto chow is, it does give you a third of all of your electrolytes, minerals, and everything like that for the day. With every shake. Yeah. So it is the new year, 2020. I can't believe it's 2020 already. It's a new decade. It's a new decade. And what a better time to be working on your health than a new decade. You know, you think about a new year brings a fresh start, but a new decade really brings a fresh start. Well, can I just say congratulations? Because if you're watching this on Monday, you've made it to week number two of your maybe New Year's resolution to get healthy, yeah. right? Because I've seen a lot of people um, leaving comments or on the different videos we've been putting up saying they just started keto, they just found our channel. They've been on keto for three days. So congratulations on working on your, improving your health, your lifestyle. Uh, you've found a community, not just here on Two Crazy Ketos, but no. the keto community overall is very welcoming, very supportive. Um, I will say if you're new to keto, be aware of the keto police. Yes. They are a thing. We are not them. We do not allow them on our channel, in our Facebook group, or anything like that. Everybody likes to do keto in their own journey, mm -hmm. and I don't think there is anything wrong with that. I think as you uh, get further into your keto journey and your lifestyle, You're you may tweak it, tweak things, change things up a little bit. Uh, but for me, the most important thing is that you've made a change, yeah. right? Any. Any diet to me is better than the standard American diet. Whether you want to do keto yeah. or you want to do plant-based whole food, anything is better than following the standard American diet and saying it's okay to eat sugar, it's okay to eat processed you know, wheat and things like that. Yeah, I mean, and you are making a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for you. Yeah. Because you're gonna feel better in 2020. And that is what it's all about. I mean, for us, talk about tweaking it. It really started out for weight loss. Yeah. And then we have tweaked this and we are enjoying it because, not just because of weight loss, but because of how we feel for health. Yeah. Right? Like not having inflammation, not having to struggle with arthritis, not having to struggle with migraines, skin conditions, all of those things. So, I mean, the weight loss is awesome, but all of the other health benefits are so great. Yeah. Now, if you are new to our channel, maybe this is your first keto on the couch. I'm going to leave a link right up here over Rachel's head for our weight loss journey mm -hmm. uh, because we were fat. 
Super. A lot of people look at us and send us messages going like, hey, you guys were never fat. You don't know what it's like. We were fat. I was really fat. I was obese. I was almost 290 pounds and I have been obese most of my life. I mean, yeah. since I was like in middle school. Yeah, it wasn't a fluke. It wasn't just because I had a baby and it was like baby weight. And it was way after the baby was was very old. Like, where's the baby? Oh, the baby is 40,000 months old. <laughs> it's time. It's time to lose the baby weight. But um, yeah, so we've been morbidly obese. That's the mm -hmm. category. And that's always fun at the doctor when yeah. they put you in that morbidly obese. Like, really, do we need... You're not just overweight. Yeah. You're not just obese. That You're adjective. morbidly obese. Like, really? Do we really need that? Right. Um, but yeah. So for a long time, and and... And now we are just enjoying life without so much sugar in it, without right. so much inflammatory oils in it, without so much garbage in it. We just feel good. And it's helping us to um, just enjoy our 40s and nearly 50s. Nearly 50. So we are doing a lot of videos. So this week, we'll talk about our week a little bit. We've been trying to get a bunch of videos filmed. We're trying to mix videos with product reviews, there will be a couple of recipe videos this month, but for the most part, we're gonna we're cutting back on recipe videos this month because we can't eat. Right. Um, but I do have a couple coming. I've got one that's gonna come out this week for our cookie dough because I was talking in one of our videos about like you can make our cookie dough. It's a great fat bomb to eat. And I realized we the recipe has been up forever, but I don't have a video on it. So I'm going to make that because I don't need to taste it. Because you've made it a million times. But we, we're going to see if we can maybe even get the kids to come in and taste test a couple of recipes to give you something a little different. But we're also doing a lot of videos on how to get started, not just for those of you who are brand new to keto, because everybody, again, like we said, does keto a little different. We're going to give you our tips, but also for people who are maybe trying to tweak the way they are have been doing the keto diet. And January is restart month. Yeah. So, I mean, the way I was eating in December, I mean, no one can eat that much cheese no matter what you're doing. That's right. <laughs> like, I had a lot of cheese in my December um, meal plan. So when you're just trying to rein it in, rein in the holiday eating and restart, it's good to just, just you know, refocus and have some tips on getting started because my January last year, it looks different than my January this year. That's right. So I did want to mention, a bunch of people have emailed us that, I don't know if you saw this, Duncan Hines is coming out with a keto line. Skeptical. Yeah, people are asking like, what is your opinion? We haven't seen it yet. We don't know what the ingredients are, but I'm gonna say this, if you're new to keto, or even if you've been on keto for a while, if you see a product in the store, Mm -hmm. in a local grocery store, and it's labeled keto, raise a red flag. Most of the time, products that are in the store, especially if they're inexpensive, don't have the greatest ingredients. No. Because the bottom line is they can't, there's no preservatives in a good healthy ingredient, so for them to have it in the store, they gotta have preservatives in it. So just raise up your red flag when you see things that are labeled keto in the store. Like somebody messaged us, about our Sam's Club haul and said they were in a store and they saw something that said keto certified and the second ingredient was coconut sugar. Mm. There is an issue there. They can slap keto on whatever they want. It doesn't mean it's really keto. No matter what, read your labels. Yeah. Be educated about what you're eating, what you're putting in your body, and really make the choice for yourself. You know, what do I want to have in my body? And yeah. I think the least amount of chemicals, the better. Yeah, the cat is here to visit again. Hello, Charity. <laughs> Welcome. So let's talk about our week. So this week, in addition to filming videos, we went to Sam's Club. Mm -hmm. We did a keto haul for Sam's Club. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link over Rachel's head. Pleasantly surprised that they're kind of picking up their game a little bit. Yeah. Not surprised that the first thing we saw when we walked in was all of those meal replacement um, foods from every diet you can think of. Yeah. I South mean, Beach. Every Atkins, company. There was protein shakes. Quest. Somebody actually asked us about protein shakes, and I did want to say, be careful with the protein shakes because here's the thing. Keto is supposed to be moderate protein, high fat. Yeah. Most of the protein shakes that you're going to see on the market, aside from having a lot of hidden sugars usually, mm -hmm. they're high protein, low fat. 
you really want to get high fat. The fat is what's going to satiate you. So one of the reasons that we like keto chow is because it doesn't have any fat and you're going to add fat. When they're adding fats, a lot of times it's not a good fat right. or they're binding it to other things like maltodextrin and things like that. So if you're going to buy protein shakes, I would try to find the ones where you can add your own fat to it, especially the powdered version. So we went to Sam's Club, we did our videos, and we've been packing because this week we're headed to... Omaha. Omaha. We are going to the Keto Summit in Omaha. I am so excited. We're Except for it's going to be cold. Like, it's like 70 degrees here today, and I'm freezing. Okay, so I have been cold all week, though, and I don't know if I'm the only person dealing with this, but when you get back into being very strict with your macros, yeah. and, and you're really, like, you're going crazy in ketosis here, Every you get cold. Yeah. You're cold everywhere. And you're freezing cold whenever you go in a grocery store. So I have been having to layer up. So I have practiced this week for going to Omaha. And P.S., I've got some fun new jackets. Thank you after Christmas sales. Yeah, we went to Express. And uh, we actually, we had gone to the mall to return some things at Hollister. Mm -hmm. And we had to find the jackets for Rachel. And then we're walking past Express. And if you're new to our channel, we pretty much are like thrift store and clearance rack shoppers. We can't afford regular prices. But my thrift stores have not had decent jackets in. Right. I mean, not surprising because it's Florida. Do, right. Uh, do a lot of people have winter coats for Omaha that they're donating? And it's winter time, so if they are traveling, now's when they, they're going to get rid of them in a couple months. Right. They're not going to get rid of them now. Summer. So we were walking past Express, and I like Express clothes, obviously. They fit me well. And so I, there's a big sign, like 50% off the lowest clearance price. That is like catnip. So Rachel's like, hey, run in the back and see if they have anything for you. And they really didn't have anything for me except for this hoodie. But they had lots of jackets for Rachel. And they were over $200, marked down to like 50 bucks. I got a furry nonsense one. Yeah. I'm so excited about that. I'm going to look crazy, but that's all right. And I had like coupons to top it off. So yeah, we got Rachel a bunch of clothes. I also got bras. <laughs> Victoria's Secrets, 60% off. Are we going to talk about boobs again? Well, I'm just telling you, you know, when you get out over 40, you've got one pointing to the rec center and one pointing to the pool. And we just want them going in the same direction. Thank you, Victoria's Secrets, for lining them up. Another place that we can't ever afford to go, except for after Christmas. 60% off. 60% off. So you're getting like $80 bras. I think we ended up paying like $23 a bra or something like that. That's crazy. I can't even like buy the junky ones from Walmart for $20 anymore. Right. The gross ones. The rest of the week, it was New Year's. We didn't even talk about it. It was New Year's. What did you guys do for New Year's Eve? I stayed up till 12 o'clock. That was a first. I, I want to say it was the first time in our marriage that I you stayed up till 12 o'clock. I can't believe it. We did. Well, we went to Buffalo Wild Wings on New Year's Eve because we were like, this is our last food meal Hurrah. for 31 days. We got, it was a Tuesday, so they were buy one, get one free. So we got two orders of larges, which is, I think, like 18 wings. Mm -hmm. And we got two mediums, which I think is like 12 wings. And we're like, we are finishing these. We couldn't eat 15 wings each. I was so mad. So then all of these wings, we, we literally ate until midnight. We're like, we yeah. can eat until midnight. Maybe that's why I stayed up. Because I'm like, one more. The funny part was at like 10 to 12, Rachel's like, I'm going to get some more wings. And she goes in. She puts them in the air fryer to crisp them up. She comes out, she takes one bite, yes, and then the clock strikes midnight. She's like, man, now I can't eat them. Foiled again. I kind of had the attitude of they were on my plate by midnight. So I ate until like 12.05. I'm a rules girl. <laughs> we made the rule. 12 o'clock, it's a new day. It's a new year. It's a new decade. Gotta stop. So the kids, though, did enjoy wings for a few days. Yeah, so that's a nice side effect. Now, going to Omaha this week... I am planning on eating wings as soon as we land on Thursday. <laughs> We're going to Buffalo Wild Wings. So, and what we'll do is just extend 
Well, at least I will. I'm going to extend it four days into February. Yeah, so because what we said was we're going to eat when we go to Omaha. Just we're on a convention. It's, you know, to try to do, although we could do keto chow and keto brick. We're staying in a place that has a kitchen and stuff. We're going to just eat good keto meals, maybe try a couple snack foods. We're going to bring a couple of foods to do a couple of review videos because there's some cool things that we want to review. Yes. Uh, so that was going on. So we had New Year's. I wanted to know what everybody did for New Year's. Yeah. And we started a new series in church this week. It's a robot series. And Rachel, in typical fashion, fortunately she did not come home in this and do keto on the couch in it. No. Dressed up like a robot. I wouldn't have fit on the couch. So I'm going to put a picture up of what Rachel was dressed in. And it was hysterical because she's walking around in the church and because she's in this outfit. It was a little cumbersome. Yeah. She walks like a robot because you're kind of like. You're wobbly. Wobbly. And the head is going back and forth. It was really funny. The kids loved it. It though. was very fun. Well, it was either they loved it or they were completely frightened. There was no in between. It was like horrified or in love with it. The funny thing is, is. If you are new to our channel, Rachel is a hugger. I am a hugger. She wants to hug everybody. I do. The kids want to hug her. The volunteers want to hug her. And this is an inflatable costume with a little fan in the back. So every time she would get a hug, the entire costume would deflate. Yeah. Well, it would shift to some other part of your body. <laughs> then so. you had to wait for it to reinflate. Yeah. Cause I, so I would have like little tiny waist and giant head. <laughs> It was awesome, though. It was fun. So I'm excited about the robot series. I think it's just going to be interesting. It was it was funny talking to the three and fours because they're still kind of trying to understand the concept of a robot. Mm -hmm. So I was like, do you have any robots in your life? And so one of the kids said, yeah, we put all of our dishes in it, and we push the button, and it cleans our dishes. And I'm like, yeah, dishwasher's kind of like a robot, right? I mean, some of them had a Roomba vacuum, right. so they totally knew that. But other ones were like, well, we put our clothes inside of a metal machine, and it cleans our clothes. And I was like, wow, yeah. It makes noise because they're like, point. They're, they said it talks like R2-D2, yeah. which, right? Like all of your appliances do, like do, 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 do. Ask Grace and our parrot. Right. He knows. They all make noises. Yeah. So in addition to all of that, we also did a little bit of meal prep for the boys because mm -hmm. we're going to do some more meal prep because we're going to be gone for four days. Yeah. And one of the things we did was we went, that's why we went to Sam's Club. We bought a bunch of chicken and sausage and things like that and just have been smoking it all and leaving everything in the refrigerator. And if you're new to keto, one of the best things you can do to make sure you're staying on track is having some food prepared in the refrigerator. So that's yes. what we did. We have right now, if you go in the refrigerator, there are like 15 hamburgers already cooked up where all they have to do is put them in the microwave. Bacon ready to go. Yep, bacon Eggs. ready to go. Everything is ready to go for everybody so you can grab and go. Yeah, and you don't have to negotiate with yourself. Right. Also, we talked about with your the video on chronometer, going ahead and, and deciding way ahead of time what you're going to eat. Yeah. Then it's already done. It's in there and... No negotiation because my emotions and my hanger when I'm getting started trying to do the right thing, I can do a lot of negotiating. Yeah. So let's get into comments. Before we get into comments, we have to give this away. We have I been trying giveaways. to give this away. We have a Cuisinart immersion blender. We have a Keto Chow flavor bundle, classic flavor classic. bundle. Classic. And one of our blender bottles. Um, if you want these blender bottles, they are linked on our website. Yep. We have the plastic ones, and then we also have the metal, stainless guys. steel ones. I keep kicking the camera. Sorry. Are you ready? Yeah, let's so, do it. So uh, we said we were going to pick it from last week's Keto on the Couch. Pick a winner. So all I have to do is screen record here real quick. Okay. I have the URL here. We're going to hit fetch. Anything goes. How many people we've got? There are... 202 unique comments. Awesome. So if you're new to our channel, the way we do this is we use a website called Pick a Winner. Pick a Winner. Uh, it goes through, it pulls all the comments out, and it gives everybody only one entry. So if you leave multiple comments, you get one entry. We're going to hit Pick a Winner. And the winner is Noel and, and Beth, Beth Escobar. Escobar. She said, finally getting a chance to catch up on the videos. I love our yearly get-together. We get hotter by the year. Oh, my gosh. Yes. 
I'm glad we're using a random generator. Yeah, because honest to goodness, this is my friend's bath, but yeah, there's no uh, nepotism going on here. So Beth, I'm gonna say it, even though you, you're going to know when Rachel already has it, do us a favor, send us an email at twocrazyketos at gmail.com and uh, we'll send this out to you. If you don't want it, let us know and we'll give it away to somebody else. So if you're new to our channel, and I know we keep saying if you're new to our channel, but we have a bunch of new people. It's a brand new year. Uh, we have a Facebook family group. And there's a link for that down below. There's it's free over a thousand people in there. And like Rachel said, it's completely free. Just lots of people in there like giving advice, uh, helping build you up, sharing, sharing recipes, recipes, different things like that. And so every week we like to go through there. We pull out some success stories. So please leave your story in there. Some before and after pictures, struggles, things like that. We pull some people out. We make them our subscriber of the weeks because your story is going to motivate somebody else. Yeah, in a very unique way. And then we also read questions and comments from last week's Keto on the Couch. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start off. We have a few subscriber of the weeks. Uh, first one is going to be Sheila. Hey, Sheila. And Sheila wrote, my husband and I have been doing keto since April of 2019. He has been a type 2 diabetic forever. He is now has an A1C of 5.4 wow. and is off all insulin and metformin. Wow. He started at 265 and is 219 now. Man. I started at 230 pounds and now I'm 180. The 2KK videos have been inspiring to us. Thank you, Joe and Rachel. Thank you. Oh and my goodness. And here is their before picture. Beautiful couple. And I'm putting them up there and there's their after wow. picture. Wow. Oh my gracious. You guys look amazing. You guys look awesome. Did they just like lose 10 years off their life? Look at I this. I know. That's the thing I love about keto is everybody ages backwards. Man, you're like teenagers. Okay, you ready? Yes. So the next one is from a longtime subscriber from our friend Jason. Jason! And Jason has been subscribed to us for, I don't even know how long, like since, I think close to the beginning. He's such an amazing guy. Awesome guy. And uh, Jason wrote, on this, the eve of my one year anniversary of starting this keto journey, I figured I would post my story to inspire someone that is at the beginning of their journey. I love that. When I was in my teens, I was very active in judo, soccer, and baseball. However, when I got into my 20s, I stopped exercising as much. And like so many others, I ate what was easy and fast for 25 years. By the time I was 45-ish, I had chronic knee and back pain as well as really bad symptoms of IBS. So I started a gluten-free diet, which helped a bit, but actually caused me to gain a lot of weight in a short time. After my grandson started walking, I found I couldn't keep up with him, and I started worrying I wouldn't be around to see him grow up. So I started keto at 48 on January 1st, 2019, weighing in at 278 pounds. I'm now 49 years old, 198 pounds, wow. and I feel better than I have in decades. I have no more knee or back pain, and my IBS, IBS symptoms are 95% cured. Wow. I am thankful for this family group as I don't have anybody in my life that follows this lifestyle, which can be a struggle sometimes. But there is always someone here that is sharing positive stories, and I hope mine helps somebody else. Keto is my lifestyle now, and I don't see that ever changing. Keep calm and keto on. And here is Jason's before picture. Wow. And here's his after awesome. picture. Awesome. I'm like tearing up. I like, know talking about him but Jason is such an incredible individual we love you so much Jason he's an inspiration such an encouraging person always has a very life-giving word always cheering everybody else on and I love that he's in here and that he's sharing that tidbit that I'm the only one in my life doing this because there's other people where they're the only person in their family. They're the only person that they know that is doing the keto diet. And I love that you don't have to do this alone just because your spouse isn't doing it or your kids aren't doing it or other family members or work colleagues aren't doing it. There's people in the, in the Facebook family group that can cheer you on, that can encourage you, that know what you're going through yep. and can help you during this time as you're onboarding it. And what an incredible year. Look at the difference a year can make. Yeah, and like Rachel said, I mean, that's why we started the Facebook family group and Jason is very, very active in there. Yeah. Jason, we are proud of you because I so feel like proud. we've been with you this whole journey. Yeah. And you've inspired us, you inspire other people and just keep it up. Just so awesome. 
So the last one is from Amity. Hey, Amity. And Amity wrote, today is my one-year ketoversary. She said, I didn't take before pictures and I'm not doing after pictures because I'm not done with this part of the journey. What a great statement. I was originally 230 pounds when I looked in the mirror and said, stop. I struggled my way through a few different diet plans with a modicum of results. When I started, I was altering Beach Body's 21-day fix to exclude breads, rice, and beans. A friend of mine suggested Dr. Grundy, The Plant Paradox, and my education grew. In this book, he talked about keto, and for whatever reason, I was drawn. I had to know more. I first found Keto Connect, then Watch Autumn Keto. However, it was the collab with Two Crazy Ketos that really hooked me. I wanted to feel the way all these people were feeling. Slowly but surely, I did. It didn't happen overnight. There were stumbles as I struggled to give up one certain thing and found the perfect excuse for making it okay. However, at the same time, I started my two youngest on keto in April of 2019. Excitement grew and we all started to shrink and get healthy until I am here one year later with no plans of stopping. My current weight is 167 pounds. Wow. And here are some pictures. She said, the picture on the left, I was a size 1 to 2X and the pictures on the right, I'm a medium. I'm still working on it and I am praying that I have additional success this year. Hugs to me and oh, one year later. And here's her before picture. Oh my gracious. And here's an oh after picture. Oh my goodness. Amity, you look so amazing. I mean, again, talk about just like aging backwards. It doesn't even look like the same person. No. So You look like your child. <laughs> so again, if you're new to our channel, please go join our Facebook family group and please leave your story down there because your story is going to impact somebody. Whether you have been on keto for a week, a month, or a year, your struggles, somebody else is happen having. Your successes, somebody else is having. And they need to hear the encouragement. Well, and I really love what she said about how she was like sh slowly but surely just working out one thing after another out of her diet because that that really spoke to me because that's kind of how I did it. Some people can just go cold turkey and and you've worked out everything, you know, bread, rice, potatoes, you know, everything out of your diet like very very quickly. For me it was like one thing after another and as we continued to do it, we working out inflammatory oils and trying to do more this way. Like I like how she's done kind of like the stepping stone effect of right. how she's done her diet. Right. So you ready to do comments? Yes. Okay, so James wrote. Hey, James. I've been going through two crazy ketos withdrawals. Oh, thank you. Oh, my gracious. <laughs> so if you're new to our channel, we live stream every Thursday. We're live streaming at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time every single Thursday, except for this Thursday, because <laughs> we're going to be gone. Um, but Consistently inconsistent. But for the whole month of December, or 20, the first 24 days of December, we were live streaming every day. So we missed live streaming when we stopped it. So we missed you guys. We missed you guys the just mostest. as much as you guys missed us. Uh, but we are picking back up 9.30s on Thursdays. Uh, this week, only because we're traveling, it may be a little difficult. We'll try, but we'll try. it'll be difficult. But definitely the next week. Yep. So Rebecca wrote, Hey Rebecca. It's good to see you even though you're not live. I was starting to have some serious two, K two crazy ketos withdrawal. I love you guys. I love you. Bless your heart. Thank you. Patty wrote, Hey Patty. Please ignore the haters. My doctor brother told me, I hope you enjoy your weight loss because you are on your way to a heart attack or a stroke. Fast forward a year, he's now eating low carb. <laughs> you know what? We're just going to have grace for those people. You know, you don't know until you've gone through it, right? Yeah. And when you know better, you do better. So I don't hold it against anybody. They'll come around. Yeah. And the reason I pulled that comment out is because, again, there are a lot of new people watching us this week. There's a lot of new people starting keto. There are going to be haters. There are going to be people that are going to tell you you're eating too much fat. You absolutely have to have carbs to live. You absolutely have to have sugar to live and just ignore them. Well, here's the thing. There is a lot of people addicted to sugar and processed foods. And when you bring up the subject that you're getting rid of sugar and processed foods in your life, it puts it right in their face that maybe they need to re-examine it. Right. And 
I don't want to give up what I'm addicted to, right? I don't even want to discuss what I'm addicted to. When you try to come near my coffee, I, I get a little bit like edgy. So when you've said, hey, I'm going to work out processed foods and fast food and um, I'm just going to be you know, like getting rid of sugar out of my house, people are like, oh my gosh, right. are you going to come after mine next? And, and they can get kind of testy. Yeah. But just be aware that a lot of times these people who are hating on your lifestyle are going to see your results yeah. and they're going to end up coming over very much like Patty's brother. Exactly. So, so Lisa wrote, Hey Lisa. It has been off not seeing you every day. I'm working on getting back on track with fasting and watching my portions. I've gained 20 of the 90 pounds I lost over the last two years and I feel like crap. Well, here's the good news. This isn't a sprint. It's not even a marathon. It's a lifetime. That's right. This is a lifetime. So you're going to just get right back on the horse and we're just going to head back in the direction you want to go. Yeah. And don't worry about it. I mean, heck, I've gained 10 pounds. Rachel has gained some weight. It's a long-term thing. You're going to go up and down. What you want to do is look long-term. Look over the course of everything. And so long as you see it going like this or going like this, don't worry about it. What you want to do is make sure it's not consistently going up. Right. Because what I hear in that statement is not that you've gained 20 pounds. It's that you've lost 70 pounds. That's right. You Maybe you're not where you want to be, but you're not where you used to be. That's right. So Carla wrote, Hey Carla. I loved your encouragement for the person who was told that a little bit won't hurt you. I hear the same thing from the non-keto parts of my family all the time. I started at 228 pounds with an A1C of 12.2 and blood sugars 525 and up. Yes, a little bit of sugar will hurt you. Yeah, I mean, you need to do you. Yeah. Don't let people rob you of what you're trying to do. It's your health and you've got to live with yourself. So even if they say stuff, you do you. Yeah, again, I don't understand why people feel that it is okay. It's not okay. Sugar is just as much of a poison as any of the other kind of the drugs and things that are out there. Mm -hmm. Cindy wrote, Hey Cindy. I'd love an immersion blender. I really want to make my own mayo. I can't spend that much money on Primal Kitchen. Right now I'm using the avocado mayo for Hellman's, but it does have soybean oil in it. Oh well, you do the best you can, right? So I'd love to try Joe's mayo recipe with the immersion blender. Starting in 2020, I'm getting back to keto basics. The holidays were tough. Yeah, the holidays are tough, and I definitely think an immersion blender is worth the investment. And you can find some now that are like just thirty dollars. Yeah, the one that we gave away, um, like from our giveaway, that was like thirty bucks at Costco. So I mean, it's an upfront cost, but what is that like six jars of mayo and you paid for it? Right now, I will leave a link for the one that we use personally down below. When I bought it, it was like ninety dollars. I think you can get them now for like on Amazon for like fifty or sixty dollars. What I like about it is that it comes with like different jars and, and a bunch of different attachments. It's got the whisk, whisk attachments and everything. But I think it's an absolute must because of everything you can do with it. But if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link over Rachel's head for our mayo video because it's it's great. You can make a mayonnaise that doesn't have the bad oils in it. It literally takes 30 seconds and all you need is an immersion blender and a mason jar, a wide mouth mason jar, and you could make your own and you don't have to worry about spending $10 no. and you know what's in it. That's the best part. And P.S. It's delicious. Yeah. It's really good. Okay. So Steve wrote. Hey, Steve. I really like chronometer, but now I'm finding myself obsessing over getting complete nutrition like the vitamins and minerals every day. And I cannot understand how anyone just eating is in catastrophically deficient in many areas. It really feels like a lot of work. New Year's Eve before 2K, I was 17 and chatting online with my now wife who is 17 years married. I was less worried about Y2K because her dad was working in computers, patching them in preparation, and he told us everything was going to be fine. Cool. So as far as chronometer, it's nice to see down below like all of the vitamins and minerals, but don't obsess over, I have to get every single vitamin to 100%. I want to say what his future father-in-law said, which is, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Don't worry. The biggest thing I would look at down there is pay attention to your magnesium 
to your sodium and then also to your potassium. Try to get those, set them where you wanna get them, like 4,500 milligrams of potassium, like 500 milligrams of magnesium. Try to get that in and also try to pay attention to the omega-3 and omega-6s. You wanna try to have that at least even or more omega-3s and omega-6, which is very, very difficult, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, that's what you really wanna pay attention to down there, but it is nice to just kind of see stuff, but I wouldn't obsess over it. No. But as far as the standard American diet, yeah, I can't even imagine how lopsided everything down below there is. At least you're headed in the right direction. Yeah, and if you're eating a lot of meat, especially when you start eating grass-fed, grass-finished meats or eating collagen and things off the bone. That'll take care of it. You'll be surprised at how all of those vitamins and everything start filling in because you get so much from the meat you're eating. So Claudia wrote, Hey Claudia. Y2K, I had enough toilet paper for a year. Not a bad thing, really. Priorities. <laughs> if I'm going into a zombie apocalypse, I need toilet paper, okay? Yeah. So last week on Keto on the Couch, we actually asked you guys, like, what were you doing at Y2K? Because remember, like, everybody thought, like, the world was going to end. Right. And I remember exactly what I was doing. So I was curious what you guys were doing. Uh, Lady Equinox wrote, Hey Lady Equinox. I wouldn't remember where I was for Y2K New Year's Eve because I was only five months old. Oh, wow. We're <laughs> old. Cruz Keto Vlogs wrote, Hey Cruz. I remember exactly where I was during the whole Y2K thing. My friend Missy and I were at McDonald's at 11.45 that night in a local town where we live. We stopped to grab a bite to eat and then we left exactly 11.58 and were walking to my car when the entire city went black. Oh my goodness. The only thing I could say was, well, dang. <laughs> Everyone was freaking out that we could see and we jumped in the car and locked the doors just in case people felt the need to go nuts. I told my friend we should head home and she agreed, but we made it to our hometown and everything was fine. There was no power out. Came to find out that the city lights were out because the transformer blew. Ugh. What were the odds of it blowing at exactly midnight? Uh, seriously. <laughs> that would be my luck where I'm thinking to myself like, oh my gosh, I just became the last person on earth. I wouldn't even want to be with Rachel when that happened. No, I'm going to freak out first and I then mean, ask questions later. A couple of weeks ago, we were getting ready to do a live stream and I opened the door and the electric went out and Rachel's screaming at me, what did you do that you just knocked the power out? I'm like, how did I knock the power out? By opening the door. I immediately assumed it was him. But it, she just thought because I opened the door, the power went out. So I can't even imagine if the power went out at exactly midnight one day. I yeah. don't do good with coinky dinks. <laughs> Anne wrote, Hey Anne. I love the O Balls t-shirts. Right? I am looking forward to 2020 and starting the new year with my other family, my 2KK family. I love having all of the gadgets too, Joe. You aren't alone in that. If I like a sweater, a shirt, or pants, I stock up on all of the different colors. My kitchen is full of gadgets and all the accessories. Thank you for helping make 2019 a fun and healthful year. I look forward to keto back on the couch in 2020. Oh my goodness. And we love you so much. I'm going to start crying. You're so awesome. Amy wrote, Hey, Amy. I so love the idea of starting 2020 with a challenge that is personal to each of us. I love Keto Chow, so I plan to commit to having it every day for lunch. I plan to fast until lunchtime and then have half or all of a keto shake, depending on how hungry I am. I will have a keto dinner before 6.30 so that I can fast for 16 hours. This is such an incredible plan. And that's... It's going to lead to success. Yeah. Just having a plan and knowing what you want to do and creating the boundaries that you want to do for your meal plan. Like, I love that you're taking control instead of letting your food be the boss of you. Yeah. So if you're new to our channel, I know it's like the 10th time I've said that. But Sorry. we are on a 31-day fast. Now, our fast is actually for God. Mm -hmm. And we start out every year giving up something. And we encourage all you guys to do something. You know, they say it takes three weeks to break a habit. Just change it or up. Or create a new habit. So what are you doing? Are you doing anything, maybe fasting something, giving something up, whether it be just to improve your health or for God? And so we asked people what they were doing, and that's what all of these are. Uh, so Tanya wrote, Hey, Tanya. I actually had to figure out how to comment. I found you both through the Keto Connect Keto for Normies podcast, and your stories resonated with me so deeply. I've been following you ever since. Wow. I also found Keto Chats through you guys, and I'm following them. I'm now going to join you in your fasting challenge with a second order that is expected anytime. 
I'm sharing in a live challenge for the first time for me. And thank you for taking the time to share your lives and blessing so many people along the way. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us and thank you for just being a part of our family. We're just really thankful for you. Debbie wrote. Hey, Debbie. With you on the January challenge, I'm going to do keto chow and one carnivore meal a day or two shakes a day. I'm going to mix it up, but I want to keep real food super simple and go back to the basics. 100% inspired by Melanie. You go, girl. I love it, right? So KJ wrote. Hey, KJ. I'm going to do keto chow and carnivore for January. I'm also going to try, and I say stress try, the 72-hour fast with real salt from January 5th through January 7th. That's a goal, man. Yeah. 72 hours. So that's actually starting today, Sunday, the day that we're filming this. But if you're not seeing this till Monday and haven't started, real salt right now is doing a 72-hour fast where it's water and salt only fast. You can start now. You don't have to even do the whole 72 hours. See how long you can go with a fast. But make sure you're using salt to supplement for your electrolytes. So Dana wrote, Hey Dana. I'm fasting all carbonated drinks. I love that. For January, I'm just drinking, trying to drink water and black coffee myself. And it can be a challenge because I used to drink a ton of seltzer water even. Nicole wrote, Hey Nicole. Thank you for all of your holiday lives. I'm going to be giving up alcohol and switching to total carbs. Wow, that is a great goal. That's awesome. And it's a real change up. It's very eye-opening to go to total carbs, right? Yeah. So Tracy wrote, Hey Tracy. 2020 is going to be the year of total carbs for me. I'm giving up snacking for January. I can fit in a lot of keto snacks that I don't know and why I'm even eating with net carbs. I'm giving up keto math and I'm sticking with whole foods. I kind of love that, right? Because total carbs does make the math equation just go away right. and you just know exactly where you're standing. And, and if you're somebody that it drives you crazy to try to track all of these net carbs, go total carbs and yeah. save yourself the headache. Yeah, one of the issues with total carbs versus net carbs, when it comes to net carbs, there are so many companies that are starting to play the fiber game. Yeah. Where they're adding in a lot of fibers or they're making a product like Chewing Delicious by adding in some different fibers that have some sweeteners in it and that are technically sugar alcohols, but they can affect you. And so that really ups. So what you want to maybe consider doing is doing a total carbs. You can up your carbs a little bit, say it like I'm going to do 30 total carbs. Right. But you have to be careful when they have all of these extra ingredients in it. So what I like telling people, if you're going to do net carbs, do your 20 net carbs, but don't exceed say 40 total carbs. That'll help you limit eating too many of the keto snacks. Because I can tell you for me, I can easily take 150 200 total carbs and turn it into 20 net carbs. Well, and a lot of times people will say, I'll do net carbs on anything that's like a whole food, like right. a cruciferous vegetable has carbs in it, but there's fiber, but I can trust the God fiber, right? right. Like I can trust the fiber that, that yeah, is in nature, but they go total carbs for anything that's processed. Right. And one of the things that we do is we follow kind of a mixture between total net carb where we... If we're eating something that's processed like a keto bar or something like that, we use the total carbs on there. But like Rachel's saying, when it comes to vegetables, stuff like that, we'll use the net carb. Except for one day a week, usually on Fridays when we're not doing our fasting, we do desserts. And that's a day where we just strictly follow net carbs, but we still won't exceed more than 50 total carbs. That allows us to have some ice cream or something like that, and it's not going to screw us up too much. It puts dessert in its place instead of it being an everyday thing. So Jamie wrote, Hey, Jamie. I'm doing the keto chow fast as well, at least until my birthday on the 25th. Ooh, happy birthday almost. Jackie wrote, Hey, Jackie. My plan for the new year is to do keto chow or OMAD only. I love that you guys fast for God every year. One more reason that I love to watch you guys. May 2020 be your best year yet. God bless you. Well, thank you. Oh my goodness. That's actually what Chris and Miriam from Keto Chow are doing. They are doing three Keto Chows a day or one Keto meal. So if they want to have like wings or something like that, that's it. They have an OMAD that day, but no other food the rest of the day. But if they're going to like not do that, then they have three Keto Chows. OMAD is hard on Joe. I love OMAD. <laughs> I just don't like OMAD because I can't eat that much in a sitting. And then, like, I get sick. I can eat a ton. Nicole wrote. Hey, Nicole. We're going to do 21 days of fasting keto chow from the 5th to the 26th. Ooh, I like it. 
Kavita wrote, Hey Kavita. I'm going to be doing every other day intermittent fasting for a total of 15 days in January. Wow. And I'm going to give up buying any keto treats. I'm giving myself a $100 grocery budget for the entire month of January, and I'm going to focus on eating everything that I have in my freezer and my pantry. I think that is such a brilliant idea. We need to do that. Absolutely. What a good steward of what you already have. Yeah, yeah go ahead. It's like first in, first out, right? So you already have stuff in your pantry. Find a way to use it up. Yeah. And that's something we have been doing. We've been going through our freezer for the last month or whatever and so on. Like, let's start using up. We have a lot of vacuum sealed meat. Let's start using that up and then we can replace it like later on when we see a big sale or something like that. Right. Sarah wrote. Hey, Sarah. I'm going to try to fast all desserts, including fat bombs for January. That is a fantastic idea. Get that sweet tooth worked out. It's yeah. going to make your life a lot easier. And then when you go into February, March, you can put it in its place exactly where you want it. Yeah. It's the last one. Lupita wrote. Hey, Lupita. Hi, Joe and Rachel. I thank God every day for helping me find you and your keto family. You guys are great. I totally relate to the sugar carb addiction problem. Since coming back from vacation right into the whole holiday season, I have fallen back into a pit. I'm going to join you in your fast in January, and I will be doing keto chow and only one regular meal at family time a day with no snacking. I can't believe how many people I have inspired to start keto just by them noticing my results. I don't want to ruin that by me not being strong myself. Thank you again for being you. Thank you for being you. And yes, you are such an inspiration to everybody around you. And we feel the same way. We want to stay on track. We want to make good choices, not just because we feel good. I mean, that should be reason enough, but we want to stay on track because we do know that the people that we love around us are noticing what we're doing and we want them to be healthy. I want my mom to be encouraged to stay with this, right? I want our children to make good food choices. And I think the best way we can inspire that is just to be good examples for that. Yeah. So that is this week's Keto on the Couch. Yay! Please, if you're not a member of our Facebook family group, please go join it. Again, there's a link down below. Make sure you leave some questions and comments on this video so we can answer them next week. And again, on the Facebook family group, leave all of your stories. Mm -hmm. um, for next week's Keto on the Couch, it's going to be a little different because we are going to be in Omaha. It could be Keto in the airport. So it'll be something. Keto on the Couch, it'll probably be much shorter because I don't know how we're going to film it in Omaha. And we don't land until 1 a.m. Florida time on Monday. So Keto on the Couch will probably be a little late going up, depending on how I, if I can edit on the plane and that kind of stuff. Uh, but it'll be from Omaha. Yeah. And we're super excited. If you are in the Omaha area, if you are going to Keto Summit in Omaha, Please uh, let us know down in the comment section and look for us. We will be there both days. Warning. I will hug you. <laughs> I am not very good with, with keeping in my space, but I'm excited and, yeah. and, and I want to hug. Yeah. So that is this week's Keto on the Couch. Please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week. Bye. bye.